Is mastering the missing piece to your latest mix? Ever been happy with your song, only to get disheartened when it comes on shuffle with some of your favourite bands? If you can emulate what I'm about to show you, it could save you so much heartbreak. Let's hear a before and after. Now I know what you're thinking, well it's louder right? But we are talking about mastering so I think the loudness jump is part of the conversation. So mastering pop punk and emo is tricky, it needs to get your song as loud and full as some of your favourite music, but without destroying your mix. In order to achieve this we need to know that our track is balanced properly, it needs to have the right amount of low end, be bright enough but not harsh, and also have clear mids, but more on that later in the video. So let's walk through this mastering chain. So before anything I will make sure that my unmastered mix is bouncing around here, the minus six decibel region. I know there are different approaches to this, some people like it to be really quite low in the digital realm, so like minus 20 I've seen something like that, but this is what works for me and my chain in particular. So first up is the linear phase multiband from Waves. I bring the threshold of all of the bands down to where I think it sits nicely and then the low end, if I feel like it needs a bit more compression I'll bring the low end down a bit further. So that's why you can see here on all the bands the threshold's pretty much the same but the low end is compressed a bit harder. Let's look at that in relation to the actual meters themselves. There we go, so it's mostly compressing the mids. But the reason I do this is it just gives everything a tighter sound. Let's bypass this off and on so you can hear what it does. Hopefully you heard it just tighten everything up a bit. Next we go into an EQ and this is monoing out the low end. Again, this step has controversy attached to it. Some people don't think you should do this. But for me, I want to know that there's no phase cancellation happening down there in the sub frequencies. I want to make sure that both speakers are pushing and pulling in tandem with each other down in the low end here. I would argue that things sound more punchy when you do this. Other people disagree with me. That's fine. It's just this is what I feel like I can hear. And now we go into the plugin that's probably doing the most heavy lifting here. This is the control hub from STL Tones, and this emulates the effect chains of Pro Mixers. So it's not like a preset, it actually emulates all the different effects that the mixers use. So in this case, with the Will Putney pack, it emulates his hardware mastering chain, as I've got it here, the preset of the Master Chain Modern. Now I have edited this preset, I brought the bass down a bit on the color, and this is a little EQ curve that mostly puts me in the right ballpark and works to complement what this plugin does. So with this on, things are going to get louder, stronger, more compressed. But this really does so much for the analog vibe that mastering can give you. Great saturation, nice compression, a good EQ curve. And I just haven't been able to find a plugin that does this any better. Let's hear it. And what I love about that is how much it brings the vocal out too. So you may find if you use an approach like this, you might need to go back and bring the vocals down if your mastering chain brings the vocals out massively, which a lot of limiters can do anyway. The main things that are happening here, the color, which is um, saturation or hardware saturation and the compressor as well. And I'll bring the threshold to be as gentle as possible. And then over here on the limiter, I just want to set the threshold so it's just sort of touching the top of the, of the meters. And then I follow that up with the maximizer from Ozone. And this is the end of my loudness part of the chain. I use the IRC1 because I feel like it gives pop punk and rock stuff edge. The others are, are much smoother um, and you might find that that works best for what you do but I want a bit more bite and grit. The IRC1 is a good mode for that and I bring the threshold down till it starts to distort the music and then I'll obviously back it up and back it up until it sounds natural again. And a cool tip with this plugin if you do use it, the stereo independence can help you get a louder mix also. Bring that up here to sort of around 20%. And then this transient emphasis is really cool as well. It stops the limiter from cutting off those transients and and neutering your music. You don't need much of it because the more of that you introduce, the more your meters will spike and then you won't be able to get it as loud, but it keeps that punch and preserves it. And then character, the slower you have it, the more distortion you sort of add into it. So you, I always nudge it up a little bit, but I don't go crazy. And that puts us here. See, 
see we're clipping a bit now, but that's why we've got these next two plugins. So Rezo, this is a cool plugin for mastering the mix and it's kind of similar to Soothe where it will take your resonant frequencies or what it believes to be your resonant frequencies and dynamically EQ them so that you get a much nice smoother top end. I mean, it works on the whole frequency spectrum, but you'll find it when you're mastering, it will be focused on the top end a lot more. So you set it to detect your resonant frequencies. It finds them, it does a really good job and then you can turn them all on at once or you can turn them on one by one here. This is what it's detected. And I find that mastering, I can trust it. Sometimes with other stuff like guitars, it can kill the life of it completely. But here, I would have tried every single one and thought, yeah, they all need to be on. And that's really cool and quick. And the second part of this is actually Soothe too, where I've gone for this ear-friendly top-on master preset so that it deals with the harshness but keeps the brightness. And that's the important part with pop punk is you want it to be bright, but it's so hard to just boost the top end because you get so much harshness with it, which is why Rezo and Soothe, fantastic. Let's hear where we are now. See, that is such a smoother top end now that we've got those in there. I mentioned earlier about low end. I find max bass is really cool on the mastering chain to, is to get your low end to come through on smaller speakers. You may have used or seen that waves do R bass, but that is frequency specific. And when you're dealing with the, the whole song, you don't just want to pick out 80 hertz or pick out 60 hertz because you've got the bass, the kick, probably some vocals too. So you want to affect the whole low end, which is why you would use max bass instead of R bass in this scenario. And then as you can see here, I've brought the original bass down so that I can boost the max bass so that I'm not blowing out the level and making the song sound distorted, which, you know, pushing low end can do. Now we've got a second linear MB here, and this is just because there's a lot of double kick in this song. So I am just making sure that that doesn't blow up when the double kick is happening. So I'm only using the bottom two bands so that the low end doesn't build up with all those fast kicks. So let's hear where we are now. There we go. So we brought that level down a little bit. I mean, we're just about too hot, but we will be dealing with that shortly. Okay, next, some saturation. Now, this is for the mids. I spent so long fighting with myself. Everything would sound great loud. And when I compared my mixes to songs that I loved, when they were loud, they, they were competitive and they sounded good. But if I was listening at quieter volumes, it just sounded like it was sucked out in the, in the mids, like it sounded like it was on a hi-fi compared to the other stuff. And I was losing that mid-range presence, which seemed more obvious at lower volumes. This solved that problem. This is basically just parallel saturating the mid-range. So it doesn't have to be Saturn 2. You can achieve that just by creating a, a send, send your whole mix to it, high pass, low pass, the top and bottom, so you just have the mids, and then adding some saturation there. It doesn't have to be this plugin. You can do it with free plugins. I just love this plugin. So nothing going on, on the top and bottom, just this mid-range here. So as you can see, zero drive, zero drive, and then in the middle, 37%, but it's because the mix is down, way down to 20%. This cool thing here allows you to preserve transient when you're saturating. It doesn't do too much, but it, it was better on than off. And um, it just shows you how good FabFilter plugins are. And then that was followed up by one more limiter. And this is just to stop it peaking. As you can see, it's literally on modern. The threshold is minus 0.1. It's just to stop it peaking. Let's see where we are now. And if you noticed, we didn't go into that ready orange bit. We stayed just where we needed to be level wise. But how loud should it be? You know, does it have to hit a LUFS number, an old school RMS number? There's so much debate about this. And I went down a rabbit hole myself trying to figure it out. But the mixes that I look up to, they all try and hit minus eight RMS. And if you can get to minus eight RMS without your song sounding distorted, then you've probably got a good chance that it's going to sound competitive and, and good. You know, if you're pushing it up to minus eight and something sounds weird, then you something's off. Your mix probably isn't right. Let's see where we're hitting. Yeah, there we go. Around minus eight. And this is just to show you that I've been referencing the whole time. You know, I pick songs I think have a similar feel and I make sure that there's enough rumble top end in comparison to that. Don't try and chase those mixes. I just try and make sure that brightness, vocal level and low end rumble is, is the same. So just quickly, if you make music like this and you want me to mix your next song, then head over to my website, terrybeckleyrecording.com. Send me a message via the contact form and I will get back to you and we can go from there.
Okay, back to it. So earlier I mentioned how having the right tonal balance is crucial when getting your music to sound competitive. Now I've found that using a similar master chain with each mix that you do, one that you know well, can help expose parts of your mix that might be stopping you from getting there. And I struggled so much with this, I used to have to take my mixes out to the car and back again and car and back again. You know, I would conduct the typical car test because you know those speakers so well and I could know straight away if something was off. But actually what I found with a mastering chain like this, and in particular it is the STL Control Hub plugin that does this for me, is when I open this up in the default setting that I've chosen, I know that it should sound great when this plugin goes on. If it's too bassy, it starts to distort, it gets really harsh, I'll know something's off. And this plugin shows me that, it tells me that. And it was a game changer for me. I'm not trying to sell you this plugin. I, know I don't have a affiliate link or anything like that. It doesn't have to be this. You can find something that works for you. Just when you get there and you know that this has been working on your mixes consistently, you'll know that any of your future mixes, when you run it through this plugin, if it suddenly the arse gets blown out of it from all the low end, or it gets really harsh, or it suddenly 4K spikes like crazy, you'll know there's something wrong and you can deal with that. And it acts like a seal of approval on my mix. I can't stress how useful this can be if you can get it to work for you. I truly hope you gained something from this video. And if you did, then please go back, check out my other videos. There's lots on there about pop punk and emo. So there could be some cool stuff for you there too. If you want your next song mixed by me, head over to my website, terrybeckleyrecording.com. Hit me up there. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you at the next one.